does happen. So the question I get asked the most often is what tuning I use. But the second most often asked question is what is the best lap steel? Or what is the best sounding lap steel? Or what's my favorite lap steel? Or what lap steel should I buy? And I don't have a good answer for that. But today's video, I'm gonna talk about some differences. I am gonna talk about some price ranges. A being is not gonna be the thing, and I'm not really gonna be comparing lap steels because comparing you know, a $250 Recording King with a $3,000 Asher uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. That all being said, um, you know, I was a luthier for a long time. I, I've worked, I worked for Bill Asher as a builder and as a tech. I worked at a, a shop that sold a lot of lap steels. I've had a lot of lap steels come across my lap, um, probably over a hundred. I have worked on lap steels for David Lindley. Um, I have worked on lap steels for Marty Rifkin. The reason any of that matters is it doesn't really. It's I'm going to give you my opinion. It's the only reason that I tell you those things is that my opinion is somewhat informed. There is no right, there is no wrong. I'm going to talk about price ranges. There are other instruments in each one of these price ranges. I, I have experience with other instruments in the price range of this, which is uh, the RG35 from Recording King. It goes for $250 from Sweetwater. It's certainly not the only budget lap steel on the market. It is the one that I prefer. Um, you certainly can't go wrong buying it. We're going to keep vintage instruments out of the purview for today. That's a whole different, it's a whole different thing. At some point, hopefully we can do that. I don't have a bunch sitting around. I'm going to, I'm going to work my way up from the recording king to a, a custom Asher Electro Hawaiian. And I will talk a little bit about the instruments that I build for myself. They're not for sale. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the reasons that I started building my own, etc. So let's start, let's start where we start, right? If you're starting out, if you're beginning, if you don't have a lap steel, a great way to get into lap steel is a Recording King lap steel or some other budget lap steel. Th this instrument is, is a perfectly acceptable instrument. If I showed up on a session or a gig with this, if I couldn't get the sounds I needed, that would be my fault, not the fault of the instrument. It sounds great. <laughs> Does everything I needed to do. One pickup is not going to be it's not going to give me all the tonal palette that I get with some of the more fancy instruments, but it's certainly more than enough for what I need. Briefly, this is the humbucker version. They also make a P90 version. Um, I did. I reached out to them and said, "I'm going to do this video. Uh, you guys have my favorite budget lap steel. Would you send one to me?" And they did, which is very flattering. I think they make great stuff all around. I think if you're looking for a, a budget instrument in any category or even some fancier instruments, Recording King is has always surprised me with its quality and its bang for the buck. Um, this has a 22 and a half inch scale length that is very common on old lap steels as well. One of the things I'm going to talk about with the, with the other instruments is they have a longer scale length, which I personally prefer. Again, there's no right, there's no wrong. But um, with, the, with, the, with the shorter scale length, sometimes I get a little, I, I am pretty aggressive, especially with my thumb, and I can pull it out of tune. <laughs> You can hear how it starts sharp and it dives down. That effect is greater on shorter scale instruments than on longer scale instruments. That doesn't mean it's a bad instrument. I, I, you know, I've already demonstrated you can pretty much play anything on it. I have to work a little harder to stay in tune on a shorter scale instrument. Which certainly is not a bad practice for me either. You know, it's been it's been really fun messing with this thing. Uh, you know, I got it earlier in the week and. I am very, I, I had, I'm very impressed with it, um, for lack of better words, and I'm excited to keep exploring it and keep using it, and, you know, eventually we'll do a deeper dive. Now, directly up from there, price range, is the Asher 
Electro Hawaiian Junior. This is made overseas. Um, they're about $1,000. Mine has a couple of upgrades. I did replace the pickups and I put on knobs that I prefer. They're just, they have a little deeper neural. I'm all about fancy knobs. Don't get me started. It's a disease. But one of the things that's cool, again, it's a 25 inch scale. Now that's a scale that is common on guitars. Uh, PRS uses that, I think, exclusively. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Fender uses a 25 and a half inch scale. Gibson uses a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. So this kind of falls in between those two. It is what's really common on Dobros. Point is, um, this is based off an old uh, acoustic Weisenborn. I really like the longer scale length. It allows me to attack a little more the way I want it to. It also has two pickups, so I get a little more tonal variation, which is really nice. <laughs> Super cool. You could actually hear at the, at the at the end though when I hit that low note. It still does. Like it, it still comes down a little bit. Um, you got me singing again. But but it's 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 less pronounced. For a thousand bucks, this is again it's a really cool instrument. I like I like it being larger. I like it being a little more of a guitar size thing. If if you have a little more budget, and you're looking for something that's going to inspire you. This is a really, really cool option. I'm not sure of what other instruments fall in this price range that are modern. I know there are some vintage ones probably out there, and that can be a cool way to go too, again, outside the purview of this particular video. Uh, for a thousand bucks, it's hard to go wrong. You can get Bill on the phone, he's great. Um, you know, they're a really, really small company. It's a, it's a family owned, family run, when you call, you're probably talking to Bill or Jessica uh, Asher. Go figure. So here's something cool that's sort of going to probably end up price-wise in between the Asher and the Recording King with one caveat, which is you got to have a guitar sitting around that you don't necessarily play a bunch. This was a Thin Line Tele. Um, in this case, this was a Warmoth body, and then I built a neck for it, which is, it's a square neck. Um, I'd be happy to share the specs that I'm using, but, but basically, it's still, it's a 25 and a half inch scale. So now, because it's a Fender, it's a 25 and a half inch scale. And the, one of the reasons, okay, there's so many things here. One of the reasons that we're not a being is... This has a TV Jones and a single coil pickup in it. It doesn't have the power of the humbuckers. It's, you know, I'm gonna use the same sound settings because I'm not gonna go through and change everything, but it doesn't, it's not gonna drive the amp the same way. Which is pretty cool. Also, you know. It just, it doesn't, it's, it's not an A and B. I would set the amp differently for this instrument, but it sounds great in that, in that clean tone. It's pretty hard to beat that. Also really cool knobs, just give a shout out to uh, Forney, F-O-R-N-E-Y. They also make these amazing uh, switch knobs that screw onto the switch, so when I go to hit the switch, I don't send the knob flying across the room, which uh, was an issue prior to finding them. I love this guitar, man, and it's it has some stuff similar to a Dobro where the body and the neck, it's not straight one line. Okay, so we're not gonna ABM it, and, and again, look, we've gone from a 22 and a half inch scale to a 25 inch scale, to a 25 and a half inch scale. If you change nothing else except for the scale length, you would hear so many differences. They are, it is such a huge part of the instrument. So we're not talking about A being, we're just talking about options. In this case, 
what I've done is I've built a neck, I've put it on a fender body, in this case it's a warmth body, um, but you could do this with any bolt-on neck guitar. If you have a guitar that has a bolt-on neck, you could have somebody build a neck for you. You could talk to your local luthiers, see if somebody would be willing to do it. My guess is you're going to end up somewhere in the four to $600 range. That's my guess. That's to build the neck, you know, hopefully put it on, make a nut, make the, get the, get the tuners all set up, and then set everything up for lap steel. That's my best guess. Um, the other thing, when I'm building my own lap steels, and I don't really understand why lap steel guys don't do this, is I intonate the bridges. Um, in this case, I have an old, an old Tele style bridge, but I, I, I cut grooves into the into the saddles, and and intonated it. Those are little things that that again, I they're really personal to me. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand why people are not intonating their saddles. I, I feel like that's makes sense. Who knows? I don't know. It's, I'm an innovator. So we move past sort of the overseas-made stuff and then sort of the really custom, like, oh, I have to have a luthier make something stuff, and we go to this. This is a made-in-the-USA Asher Electro-Hawaiian guitar. Now, this I actually built myself. Um, when I worked for Bill a million years ago, it, he had a piece of wood, this is a piece of Australian red cedar that was too thin for his regular guitars, and so I was able to make one out of this at a reduced price, etc. It's super cool, it has wolf's head knobs. Again, I'm a weird knob guy. I don't know what the, what the deal is there, but it has cool wolf's head knobs. Um, it's 25 inch scale. It's really similar to the the overseas Asher. Um, similar to my my custom one too. You can sort of see that I have intonated this saddle as well. That's not a thing that Bill does. I I, I don't know why, but I did it to mine. Um, I really love this guitar. It sounds phenomenal. Probably the highest output pickups. Not high. I, I really like lower output pickups, but these are probably the hottest pickups I have in any guitar. So again, when we're we're not a being because everything is driving the amp differently, but you can sort of hear the character. This is a really big, fat sounding guitar. I really love it. Um, so you can also feel the quality. When I'm looking for an instrument that inspires me, and I pick up my 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 made in China Asher, I have to look and see. Anyway, my overseas the Asher Hawaiian Junior. The the finish is a thick finish. It's it's again it's these are the things that as you get to fancier guitars you get fancier woods. In this case, lighter weight. I personally prefer lighter weight instruments. Again, it's a preference. Um. But I've always preferred lighter weight instruments. This instrument is, the finish is thin. Um, I mean, I, you know, look, it's, it, I pick it up and it feels really, really happy to me. I can see the quality of the wood. There's also a ton of damage on it. I mean, I've played this thing for years and years. Um, it was my main guitar for a long time. And I, and I love it. I really, I love this instrument. It's a phenomenal instrument. Um, I'm just noticing, it's okay, I'm noticing things, it's fine. Point is, when I pick this instrument up, it, it, it really does, you feel the quality, and that's the reason to buy something handmade, to buy something made in the USA, to buy something that has, um, you know, a really thin finish and, and, and just really nice appointments. Uh, so I love this, I love this instrument, and... If I were to buy a lap steel today, I probably wouldn't buy something inexpensive. But part of that is I have the budget for it. 
Um, I, I, I know I'm going to play it. And this is the one that makes me go, hey, I want to pick this up. So those are all considerations. That, that, that one and, the, and the, the Tele lap steel that I built. And then we're going to go to this last one, which is the Apocalypse Machine. Um, I have a couple of these. These are the ones that I build for myself. They are not for sale. They're not going to be for sale. So if I have these cool ashers, and I do, I have a few. I have a baritone, I have that one, I have the, the overseer, you know, I have a bunch. But the point is, I was missing a couple things that I wanted. And, and then on top of that, I like guitars. And I want a bunch of different, I have this one, which is made out of ash and has uh, Firebird pickups in it. I have another one that's mahogany that has a Firebird pickup and a, a P90 in it. I'm building another one right now that's gonna have humbuckers. So having multiple sounds, multiple woods, the humbucker one's gonna be Karina, uh, they all sound different. So I like having a bunch of guitars. I, I appreciate the different sounds and spending three to $5,000 on a guitar, uh, for different pickups and different woods for each one would be cost prohibitive. I don't make enough money for that. The, the other thing is, and this is the other, well, there's two things. One is string spacing. So the spacing at the nut and, and similar to the one that uh, I built the neck for, which is right here. Uh, the spacing at the nut is that's my preferred spacing. And it's, it's really similar to a Dobro. I played Dobros for a lot of years and and so I'm using a Dobro thickness. And then also with a Dobro, and the same thing with, with you may have noticed that the ashers are, are flat across the bottom. And this is tapered. It's this thickness and this thickness are different thicknesses, which just, it feels more comfortable for me. So I have pickups. I want a bunch of different body woods and a bunch of different pickups. Can't really afford to have those instruments. Uh, and then really specific things like string spacing at the nut, uh, and and then this weird desire to have this. But I, you know, I, I'm building instruments that sound good for me. And there's also a zen to building them. There's a joy, you know, I, the fact that I built this and that I get up and play it every day and that it sounds this good and that it does the things that I want it to do, I love that. It gives me joy. Um, <laughs> It's stringy and it's bright and it's snappy and that's what I wanted from this guitar. Uh, I'll show you my other one. I really like that sound. That's the Firebird pickup in the neck. If I compare it to the Asher. It's much beefier, which is also really nice. I ha there's a reason it's still here, you know? I could sell it, I'm not going to. There's a reason this is still here. But these are my main. Right, and. It sounds different than the other, I don't know why I'm yelling at you. It sounds different than the other one. It sounds great. I like them both. I like the way they look. I'm very proud of these guitars, but they're not for sale. The, the reason I'm talking about them at all is because these are the ones where I wake up today and I'm stoked to play it. And that's what we're talking about. And this sound, is great. But so is this. I would say that they both sound great and they sound different, but there's not, nobody's gonna hear this one that costs $250, which is I think the price of one of the pickups in some of these guitars, um, and go, 
that's not good enough. We could sit here and ABM all day. Who cares? The point is to be inspired. So I hope you, I hope this helps, A. I hope this helps you find an instrument that works for you. Um, I have a huge thank you to Recording King. I'm a big fan of their instruments. Uh, a big thanks to Bill Asher for everything he's done in my life. And, um, I, you know, there's a, I have other lap seals I want to shout out too. I've never played um, a lot of the higher, higher end ones. These are the ones that I have in my possession at the moment. I hope this was helpful for you. If you learned something, if you like what you saw, throw it in the comments. Uh, if you disagree with me, you think I'm stupid, you hate all the things that I do, you know, keep it to yourself. Just click on the next video. Keep it to yourself. It hurts my feelings. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging. Mm -hmm.